Hello and welcome to the Morningstar series, Future Proof. I'm Emma Wall and I'm joined today by Richard Parkin, Head of Pensions for Fidelity. Hi, Richard. Morning. So we are running a retirement week special this week and we've reached Thursday, which is the day where we focus on those approaching retirement. And one of the great things about being someone who's approaching retirement in this day and age is at 55, you can get access to 25% of your pension pot tax free. Should we be doing it? Well, generally, we suggest that people should stay invested as long as they can, uh, unless they've got a very good reason to be taking the money out at age 55, they're probably better just leaving it in there. And that's something that's come up with some studies over the last year since pension freedoms were introduced. The People's Pension, for example, have found that people didn't realise they could do this. It may well be the fault of the media, we'll hold our hands up, that they thought not only was the 25% a real positive thing to take, but it was their only option. And that's not the case, is it? No, not at all. I think there's been a lot of talk about what people can do, but not very much about what people should do. So, no, there's no reason that you need to take anything or take any action, either at 55 or even even when you stop employment, you can, you're free to take money from your pension as and when you want to. And generally, the, the view is you should only take it when you need it. So things to think about there are, um, you know, do I have any debt that I might need to pay off? Quite often, particularly if you've got unsecured debt, um, then it's uh, better to pay that off and get that out of the way um, rather than staying invested. Um, you might also think about um, what tax you're going to pay on the money you take out. Um, people, particularly if they're still earning, will find that if they take a lump sum um, over and above the, the, the tax-free cash, they'll end up paying tax on that as well. So you have to think very carefully about what you need the money for and, and then what the consequences of taking that are on, on your tax position. And what are the benefits of staying invested, very simply? So, so um, well, first, of the, the, the most important one is that you'll continue to earn investment returns on your money. We do see people taking tax-free cash and just putting it in a bank account, which, you know, given they may have 10 or 15 years left before they actually need the money, is, is not great on today's rates of, of interest. So, so that's that's the, the, the main reason. Um, there is a, a, a more subtle reason, though. In some cases, um, uh, particularly if you're in a company pension scheme, you may be asked to effectively take your entire account if you try and take your tax-free cash. And we've seen some people effectively opting out of pensions as a result, and that's not good because not only do you lose future growth on your m money, but you'll lose future contributions from your employer as well. And I think that one very important thing to consider is these pension freedoms allowing us access. You, you alluded it to it then. You may not need the cash for 10, 15 years. In fact, much longer. We're living longer. We're, we're much healthier during those years. So the time that you're going to stop working, the time you're going to draw down on this cash may well be decades in the future. How does that affect your investment decisions, for example, if you're in your personal pension, in your SIP? Yeah, so, so traditionally the way the way that pensions had worked, particularly in, in workplace, was that you, you de-risks, as we call it, as you get to retirement. So what that means is you start off investing in growth assets like stocks and shares, and then as you get closer to your chosen retirement date, you'll gradually move into safer assets like fixed income, bonds and cash. Now, though, because people aren't necessarily going to take that money at retirement, there's an argument that says you should stay in those riskier, higher performing assets for longer. And indeed, um, the way that a lot of people have redesigned their investment strategies does exactly that. Because a 10 year horizon at 30, to be honest, is no different to a 10 year horizon at age 60. Yeah, well, they're, they're absolutely right. I mean, you do have to think uh, a bit more about um, the risk of the market suddenly falling, because the last thing you want to be doing is taking money out just after after a market fall. But there are um, new types of investment funds that, you know, what we call volatility managed, which effectively reduce the level of overall risk, but still offer a much better return than you get from, from more um, conservative investments. Richard, thank you very much. Thank you. This is Emma Wall for Morningstar. Thank you for watching.